Welcome to the third episode in the second season. Now, Zimbabwe is my home country and I'm proud to be Zimbabwean, but it's not the only African country on the continent. There are several others just to let you know. And so, one of the countries that I would like to go to next is Namibia. But where lies Namibia? It lies in the southwestern part of Africa and it's also a neighboring country to Zimbabwe. Now we do share quite a lot in common in terms of our culture, traditions, as well as foods. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's show. But in terms of tourism, what can you get out of Namibia? There are two places that I would like to share with you today. That is Spitzkop as well as Epupa Falls. How about we get into that adventure of a lifetime? Stay tuned. Africans love to dance and that they are born with natural rhythm and that they dance with so much energy. But how far true is this? Well, I cannot speak for all African people, but I can say that there are two sides to every coin. There are some people who are hopeless on the dance floor. It's like they have two left legs and 
it just doesn't work out for them and some people don't even like dancing at all but it's part of our culture as Africans to express ourselves like we dance at uh, funerals we dance at weddings we dance when we're bored and one of the most exceptional things at most weddings across Africa is when the bride and bridegroom crew go for weeks on end practicing special dances to show to their guests on their wedding day. And of course, the guests are reciprocate by dancing as well, just to show that they're congratulating the couple that has come uh, together in, in marriage. Now, growing up at boarding school as well, I would, uh, with my friends, when we were bored, take our buckets and we would play them as if we were playing drums and we would sing and dance. It was a way of chasing away boredom. Now, some of the most typical dances all across Africa are street dances. Now, I want to go into street dances in Namibia. So how about we get into that? Stay tuned. Tina's Corner. instant can't you hear me calling you again, calling tina me. yes mom you called please send me this remote control please but mom the remote control is right I'll stop next making to that you. ugly face and just hand me the remote control here it is mom i gave birth to you you should use those hands tina. Tina, can you make me a cup of tea, darling? But Mom, I'm busy. It's very cold today. I want a cup of tea, please. Aww. Did you even put three teaspoons of sugar in this? It tastes but so Mom, blunt. I, put, I, did, I did put three spoons mm. of sugar in there. I don't. Go put some sugar in this Mom, tea. really, I oh, did. I to do silly errands. Doesn't she know that I want to be a successful YouTuber? Ah. Oh. Why are you talking about me behind my back? Are we enemies? No, mom, no, you just misunderstood. Am I your best friend? I'm your mother. Ma. Like your own A Taste of Africa product, be it a mug, a t-shirt, a backpack, a notebook, why don't you head on over to my Shopify page? The link is listed below. 
Wherever you are around the world, you can get your own product mailed to you. Until next time, enjoy a taste of Africa. I looked up and saw the storm clouds coming. I knew that it was gonna be mentioned earlier that Namibians and Zimbabweans share quite a lot in common and food is no exception. Now Namibians and Zimbabweans both eat biltong and this is just dried meat. It can be crocodile meat, it can be ostrich meat, it can be kudu, springbok, uh, it can also be cow meat, beef. So this is also common amongst most African countries as well, not just Namibia and Zimbabwe. And also Namibians and Zimbabweans both eat uh, Mopani worms. Now in the first season of Tina's Corner, I did do a video on how to prepare and cook Mopani worms. If you missed that, go back and watch that episode. You will not be left out. And today I'm going to make a common dish that is also known in Namibia and Zimbabwe, which is fed cakes, also known as mafed cook in Zimbabwe. And Amagwinya in Devele or Sulu. How about we get into the preparation of fat cakes and how you would eat it or what you would eat it with. Stay tuned. Mmm. Kunaka. Munandi. Delicious. <sniffs> fat cakes and kapana. Now I have with me my mixing bowl and it's dry inside. I'm going to put in my dry ingredients, two teacups of flour. This is just ordinary flour, not self-raising flour. And I put in one and then two, two teacups of flour. And now I'm also going to add some salt. I just happen to have sea salt in the house, but you can use any kind of salt you have. And I'm just going to put in a pinch of salt, just a pinch, nothing more than that. And next, a quarter teaspoon of dry yeast. And then I'm going to add in some sugar for taste. I'm putting in three tablespoons of sugar. But you can use any color sugar you have in your house, it's okay. I just happen to have brown sugar. And then you mix your dry ingredients together before you put in your wet ingredients. And I want to put in warm milk, but you can use warm water just in case you're lactose intolerant. And then you mix your ingredients all together. Make sure it's not too runny and it's not too stiff but that is just right. In the meantime, you have your hot oil in the pan. And mix it all up. Now you can use a tablespoon to pour in your dough. But well, you do it one tablespoon at a time. You wait just a few seconds and then you turn them upside down. Until they're nice and brown. And there you have it. Kapana is just salad. And the ingredients for making kapana are as follows. Diced tomato onions, green bell pepper, as well as green chili. And then I'm just going to pour the ingredients and mix them inside this bowl. Now everything else has been mixed equally together. It's time to eat. I wonder what our final dish is going to look like. And here it is, the final effort. So I have my fat cakes right over here, my kapana, and I added some meat because Africans love to eat their meat. And of course, I'm going to couple it down with some orange juice. And that's it.
Sadly, we've come to the end of another episode of Tina's Corner. I do hope that you enjoyed each segment that I prepared just for you, my band of lovelies out there. And that you were inspired, that you were challenged, you were motivated, informed, and entertained. And that you would make a date same time next week for a fun-filled episode of Tina's Corner. I do encourage you to like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends out there so we can continue to grow as a band of lovelies. And I have to encourage you, if you feel that, well, there's something that uh, you would like to add to Tina's Corner to spice it up, well, why not drop it in the comment segment and I'll make sure to read. And if you feel like you'd want to collaborate with me to make this show va va voom, do drop in an email at tinasmusicpage at gmail.com and I'll make sure to read and try to get back to you. But until then, how about I say goodbye? <laughs>